Hi everyone, this is your math guru. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the following problem that encompasses your simultaneous equations, your trinomials, your quadratic equations, radical exponents, and exponential equations. Please don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button below for more easy to understand math concepts. In the first part of the question, we are to solve for x. The first question says 1.1.1 we have x squared minus 9 equals to 0. I'm going to show you three methods in which we can solve for x. The first method, we have method 1. We have x squared minus 9 equals to 0. We can solve this using the DOT or difference of 2 squared. So we have x squared minus 3 squared equals to 0. If we factorize, we have x plus 3, x minus 3 equals to 0. Therefore, x plus 3 equals to 0 or x minus 3 equals to 0. From there, we have x equals to minus 3 if we take plus 3 to the other side or x equals positive 3. For the second method, if we have x squared minus 9 equals to 0, we can take minus 9 to the other side. We have x squared equals to positive 9. To find x, we are going to square root both sides. So we have x equals plus or minus the square root of 9. Therefore, x equals plus or minus 3. The square root of 9 is 3. For the third method, because it's a quadratic equation, we can use the quadratic formula. So if we have x squared minus 9 equals to 0, the quadratic formula states that x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. For this quadratic equation, we have our a, that's the coefficient of x squared, to be 1. We have our b, coefficient of x, we don't have x, so we call that 0. And our constant, c, equals to minus 9. If we slot that back in, we have x equals minus b, that's minus 0, plus or minus square root of 0 squared minus 4 times a, that's 1, and times c, I'm going to extend my fraction bar, or my roots bar, minus 9, close bracket, all divided by 2 times a, and that's 2 times 1. If we simplify, we have that as plus or minus square root of 36 divided by 2. And if we simplify that, we have x equals square root of 36 is 6, 6 divided by 2, that's 3, so we have plus or minus 3. So those are the three different methods of solving the first question, which is a quadratic equation. If we go to the second part of the question, we have 1.1.2 that says x minus 5 plus 2 over x equals 0. To start with, I'm going to make it a linear equation. The LCD is equal to x, so I'm going to multiply each term by x. A new equation becomes x squared, that's x times x, minus 5 times x, that's 5x, 2 over x times x, that will give us 2, 0 times x, 0. Now we have a linear quadratic equation. Using our quadratic formula, we have x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Our a, in this case, the coefficient of x squared is 1. Our b is minus 5, that's the coefficient of x. And our constant c equals to positive 2. If we slot that back in, we have x equals minus b, that's minus, minus 5, always 
use a bracket because the value of b is negative i have plus or minus square root of b squared that's minus 5 squared minus i'm going to use my bracket again 4 times a that's 1 my dot is a multiplication for a c that's times 2 close bracket all divided by 2 times a that's 2 times 1 that will give us minus times minus that's positive 5 plus or minus we have square root of minus 5 squared that's 25 minus 4 times 2 8 all divided by 2 and if we simplify this we're going to have x equals 4.56 or x equals 0 0.44 all to two decimal places for the next part of the question we have question 1.1 point three which states that x i'm going to take out my equal sign here as x equals one plus root of seven minus x the first step is to isolate my root so that would mean i'm moving my positive one to my left hand side i have that as x minus one equals square root of seven minus x so take out my root I'm going to square both sides as shown and squaring both sides i have x minus one all squared will give me if i fall x squared minus two x plus one equals the squaring of the root sign cancels it so i'm left with a seven minus x if i move all the terms to one side to make it a quadratic equation i have x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 7 plus x equals to 0 and if i collect like terms i have x squared minus 2x plus 1 that's minus x plus 1 minus 7 minus 6 equals to 0 factorizing i have x minus 3 multiplying x plus 2 equals to 0 so therefore x minus 3 equals to 0 or x plus 2 equals to 0 so the value of my x equals to 3 or x equals to minus 2 let's look at the next question the next question states that x squared plus 2x minus 15 is greater or equals to 0 factorizing my left hand side i have x plus 5 multiplying in bracket x minus 3 is greater or equals to 0 this is inequality so we need to test a point from what we have we have x equals to 5 or minus 5 if you take positive 5 to the other side x equals to minus 5 or x equals to positive 3 will make the equation equals to 0 if you go to a number line to test this point I have minus 5, minus 5, and point positive 3. If we go back to the question, let's start by picking a point less than minus 5. So let's say we have a point minus 6. If you go back to the inequality, the equation, we have that as minus 6 plus 5. The value we're going to get in the first bracket will be a negative value so any number less than minus 5 will give us a negative value in the first bracket in the second bracket we're going to have also a negative value and we know that negative times negative will give us a positive value which is that means that's equal or greater than zero so for values less than minus 5 we are fine with that it makes the equation true for values between minus 5 and 3, let's say we have minus 4. If we go back to the equation, for the first bracket, if we have 
values between minus 5 and 3, and we're using minus 4 as an example, the first bracket if we have minus 4, that means we're going to have a positive value in the first bracket. In the second bracket, if we have minus 4, minus 4 minus 3 will give us a negative value. So values between minus 5 and 3 will give us negative value in the second bracket. Plus times minus, that's negative. That doesn't make the equation through because a negative value will mean I need a value less than 0. And the equation says we have a value greater or equal to 0. So it doesn't make the equation true. So therefore, between values between minus 5 and 3 is not true. So I put a x there. Let's test for values greater than 3. If we have values greater than 3, then what is going to happen is I have, we can use the point 4 or 5. If we use positive 4, for example, the first bracket, 4 plus 5, that would always give us a positive value. So any number greater than 3 will always give us a positive value in the first bracket. And in the second bracket, any value greater than 3 will also give us a positive value. Positive times positive will give us positive. So the equation is true for values greater than 3. So what that means is we have a point less than 5 and point greater than 3, which will make the equation true. So we can also represent that on a number line this way. That's minus 5 and 3. So we have a graph as shown. So we have points less than 5. We have points greater than 3, such that the points from positive 3 greater than positive 3 are true and points less than minus 5 are also true. Another way of representing that is we have x to be values that are less or equal to minus 5, or we have values of x greater or equal to positive 3, where your x is an element of real numbers. Also, we can represent it in this manner x is an element of minus less than points that are less than minus 5 to infinity. We have a starting point as minus 5 or points that are greater than 3 to infinity. I'm going to change that quickly such that x is an element of real numbers. Let's look at the next question. In the next question, we are to solve simultaneously for x and y in y plus 2x equals to 3. I'll call that my equation 1. And the second equation, y squared minus y equals 3x squared minus 5x. I'll call that my equation 2. Because I'm going to use my substitution method, I can say from equation 1, I'm going to pick the simpler linear equation. So from equation 1, I have y plus 2x equals to 3, making y the subject of formula. I have y equals 3 minus 2x. That will be my new equation 3. So because I'm using my substitution method, I'm going to substitute equation 3 into my second equation, that's equation 2. As substituting, what that means is every occurrence of y, I replace it with 3 minus 2x. So therefore, I have y squared minus y equals 3x squared minus 5x will become 3 minus 2x all squared minus 3 minus 2x. Be careful of using your bracket because of the negative sign. I have 3x squared minus 5x. To expand, I'm going to expand 3 minus 2x all squared and that will give me 9 
minus 6x minus 6x plus 4x squared minus 3 plus 2x equals 3x squared minus 5x so from there i'm going to collect like terms move all my terms to one side in order to have a quadratic equation so quickly let me start by highlighting the common terms i have my x squared i have my x i have 6x 6x 2x and 5x color coding will only help me to group better it's not compulsory so let me start with my x squared for my left hand side i already have 4x squared if i take my minus 3x squared to my left hand side it becomes a minus 3x squared i'm done with my x squared i'm going to my x on my left hand side i have minus 6x minus 6x that's minus 12x i still have my plus i'm going to correct that so on my left hand side i have minus 6x minus 6x that's minus 12x plus 2x that will be minus 10x if i bring my minus 5x from my right hand side to my left it becomes a plus 5x i'm done with terms that have a curve um that have x then i'm going to my constant terms i have 9 minus 3 that will be plus 6 equals to 0 so finally i have x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals to 0. from here i'm going to continue on the other side i have x squared plus minus 5x plus 6 equals to 0 if i factorize i have x minus 2 and x minus 3 so therefore x minus 2 equals to 0 or x minus 3 equals to 0 therefore the value of my x is positive 2 or x is positive 3. now for the two values i need to find the corresponding value of y so using my equation 3 as shown if x is 2 i have y equals 3 minus 2x slotting in my 2 y equals to 3 minus 2 times 2 that's y equals to 3 minus 4 so the value of y when x is 2 is minus 1 i'm going to do the same for when x is 3 using the same equation 3 i have y equals to 3 minus 2x y equals to 3 minus 2 multiplying 3 y equals 3 minus 6 therefore the corresponding value of y when x is 3 is minus 3. let's look at the last question my last question says simplify completely without the use of a calculator root to n of 10 n over 5 to the power of 2 n i have for my numerator 10 to the power of n plus 2 to the power of n plus 2 i'm correcting that all divided by 5 to the power of 2 n plus 4 times 5 to the power of n the first step is to change all my base into prime numbers and changing them to my prime numbers i have root to n i'm going to extend my root i have 10 n i'm repeating the question 2 to the power of n plus 2 all divided by 5 2n plus 4 times 5 to the power of n so changing i'm going to start by changing my 10 10 i have 2 times 5 will give me 10 so i still have my root 2 times 5 all to the power of n plus i'm going to break up my 2 so i have 2 n plus 2 all divided by 5 to the power of 2 n plus 2 squared 2 squared will give me 4 multiplying 5 to the power of n so breaking it up into individual exponent i have 2 to the power of n times 5 to the power of n plus 2 to the power of n 
times 2 to the power of 2. I'm expanding using exponential laws. At the bottom, I have 5 to the power of n, all to the power of 2, plus 2 to the power of 2, times 5 to the power of n. So if you look at each term, for my numerator, I'm going to highlight my common terms. And for my denominator, I'm going to highlight my common terms. So factorizing the common terms, I have root of n. I'm taking out 2 to the power of n in the first part. And then I have that as, I'm left with 5 to the power of n plus 2 squared for my numerator. For my denominator, I'm factorizing 5 to the power of n, which is common to both sides. I'm left with 5 to the power of n plus 2 to the power of 2. Note that 5 to the power of 2n is the same as 5n to the power of 2. And what that gives me is 5n times 5n, applying the laws of exponent. If the base are the same, I get to add the powers, so that's 5 n plus n, which is still back to my 5 to the power of 2n. So if you check, I have 5 to the power of n plus 2 squared common at the top and at the bottom. So that cancels out. I have root to n, 2n over 5n. Applying the laws of exponent, I have that as 2 over 5 all to the power of n and n if i change my radical expression that will be 1 over n and if i multiply each term uh, or each power by 1 over n what i'm going to have is 2 over 5 thanks for watching bye